this will be a really exciting part. I am happy to introduce Gray Scott. He's a futurist and emerging technology expert. We're going to start um, this part with his incredible video. So let's proceed. The future is a portal inward. It is computational and ancient. We are uncovering this ancient idea of what it means to be a human being on this planet. All of the things that we know about ourselves, all of the discoveries, that is an emergent system that comes from the cosmos. We're discovering this ancient mirror. This is a continuum. Think of the cosmos as the original algorithm, and we are just a small piece of that algorithm. So as the cosmos evolves, as we evolve, new algorithms, new codes will emerge within this continuum. We are an extension, a mirror of the cosmos and the computational nature of the cosmos. We are just emerging out of a system that is billions and billions and billions of years old. We are the new ones. And so all of these computers and robots and all these things that we're manifesting, it is all the same code. We are under the illusion that the future is somewhere out in front of us, when in fact, the future is already here. It exists in our neural network. It exists in our visualizations. Nikola Tesla says in his autobiography that he used to visualize all of his inventions. Inside of his head, he would see them. He would turn them on. He would calibrate them in his mind before he would ever build them. He understood that the future was internal, that the future was inside of us, and that we mirror that internal world, and that is what the future becomes. We're actually moving deeper into the body, moving deeper into the mind. We're going deeper into the self. Every mathematical formula that we need to create a rocket, robot, driverless car, all of those things already exist. They're here in the room with us. They are a part of our evolutionary history. It rides along inside of our DNA. The deeper you look into yourself, the more you're going to find the future. And that's why I say the future is a portal inward. It is a destination to the self. Futuristic Now series by Gray Scott. Now introducing him. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'll try to live up to my video presence. <laughs> so today's talk was actually inspired by a cover article that was written by Kevin Kelly for Wired Magazine uh, called Mirror World. And uh, for those of you working in VR and AR, you'll, know, you'll probably have heard of this already. Mirror world is the concept, sort of the placeholder for what we're creating when we talk about VR and AR. Um, actually, it's a placeholder for everything that all of you are working on. It is the next internet. It is the next frontier. It's the digital cosmos. And the word mirror world itself is just a placeholder, of course. Uh, we know that as technologies change, uh, that the names of those technologies also change and evolve. So I'm just using Mirror World as a placeholder for this concept. The interesting thing is, though, once I read Kevin Kelly's article and I started researching the Mirror World as an idea, I stumbled across something really fascinating. And that is, and this was quite by accident, I stumbled across the idea of the mirror. And I thought, what does this have to, what does the mirror, the evolution of the mirror itself have to do with innovation? What is the mirror, how did it affect us? What does it have to do with where we're headed? Nope. So Kevin Kelly has a great, um, quote here, he says, technology itself is the microscope needed to inspect the effects of the technology. And what he's circling around here is something that I've distilled into a very uh, simple but cosmic quote. 
that we are nature and nature is technology, is technological. If you understand this quote, or if you disagree with this quote, it means that you're rubbing up against the surface of innovation. You're, you're touching the surface of where we are headed. And as I said in my video, the future is inside of us. It is a part of our evolutionary history. You see, we find ourselves in a cosmic novel, and we woke up in chapter three. We have no idea what the book is about. We have no idea how many pages are in the book. And so we have to be very careful to back away from thinking that we are in control of this narrative. Nature is in control of this narrative. And as we're seeing on this planet today, we are feeling the, the effects of not paying attention to that natural narrative. As I said, the future is a portal inward. What we find there will be computational and ancient. And I've said this, um, I took a, a course on rhetoric and uh, the guy that was teaching it said, you have to say, as a public person and as a person speaking to the public, you have to say the same thing over and over and over until you want to die. And by that time, the public is just starting to hear you. Okay? So keep that in mind, too, as the public face of your innovation. You, you, you have to keep repeating the ideas. You have to keep uh, educating the public, really, about what we are doing. Everyone in here, I, I mean, I'm so proud, and thank you, Omar, for having me. I'm so proud to be in this room because all of you are at the edge of the future. We are, everyone in this room is creating what will be, hopefully, a balance in the future between nature and technology. So who will own the portal inward? What is that portal? Uh, people in the AR industry have talked about glasses, headsets, uh, digital contact lenses. A lot of these ideas are out there. But we have yet to see the market, and I mean the general public, have access to the portal for them to see that mirror world, that virtual world, that augmented world. And I mean something that's very wearable, that's very practic practical, that everyone could use. Of course, we know that Apple is probably working on something um, similar to this, as, as are many companies. Um, and I think the way that this will unfold is that there will be an opacity setting inside of these wearable devices. So at the lightest opacity, you'll see the real world. At a medium opacity, you might see augmented information. And at the most extreme, the real world will disappear and you'll see the virtual. And whatever device is there will have to be seamless in that integration. So the mirror is one of the most influential technology, technological objects to emerge from nature. And as I said when I was doing research for this speech and when I was researching the idea of the mirror world, what I realized is that at some point in our evolutionary history, we as a species looked down into a dark pool of still water and realized that that's us looking back. That had profound implications on our evolution and our cultural uh, narrative. And so now what's happening is we, we've moved through history, through those dark pools of water, up to shiny bronze, and now in the future, moving towards the James Webb Telescope that, is, that may show us the beginning of our existence, the beginning of the universe. All of those things have one thing in common, and that's the mirror. Right now, we're in the phase of the digital mirror. This is the era of the digital mirror. Every time you look at your phone, you're not just looking at yourself, you're looking at someone else's interpretation of their mirrored self. So social media, as many problems as social media has, it is a reflection, an amalgamation of our internal narrative. It can be ugly, it can be beautiful, but it is us. And we're in the phase of a new level of consciousness. We're see the digital mirror is raising our consciousness into a new level of seeing who and what we are, a question that we still don't have a concrete answer for. So I've said before, and, and I've used this, um, this triad in many different ways to describe the futures, not just the future. Uh, the mirror will be one of many futures. There are going to be pure biological futures, augmented biodigital futures, and pure digital futures. 
Some of these are in, in different incarnations of, of evolution and development. And the reason I say that is because we already have all three of these. We have people that are just pure biological. They don't have any augmentation to their body. Uh, they're not used to using any sort of uh, instruments to uh, change their worldview. We have augmented uh, bodies, uh, human beings on this planet right now, and we have the beginning, and here I'm talking about AI, we have the beginning of the pure digital species. In the future, all three of these are going to continue to evolve to a state where we are constantly in contact and bumping up against all three of these. We're already there now. Most of us deal with Siri. Most of us deal with Alexa. Some of us have glasses. That is an augmentation. Some of us have cochlear implants. That is an augmentation. So when we think of the future, we can't just think of one singular future. We have to think of futures. And each one of us will experience a slightly different future, depending on where you live, what your background is, and what you're working on. So digitization of everything, this is something I've been talking about for quite a while. Imagine a future where every sensorial experience is quantified, calculated, predicted, and digitized. And the key word in that phrase is predicted. We're at the predictive analytic stage. We have been there for a while, but the public doesn't necessarily know that that's, what, that's the case. Most of you in here know and realize that your behaviors are being predicted. It may be just a small fraction of your behaviors, but it is being predicted because you're constantly putting your internal mind, your unconscious mind, you're reflecting that into the digital cosmos, the mirror world. So some of the, the, the questions around what the mirror world will look like. Obviously, every one of us is going to have a digital twin that is in gestation right now. Every time you add a new picture of yourself, um, every time you add a new idea to the, the digital cosmos, you will see as we evolve that the digital representation, your digital twin, will become more and more concrete. Uh, just, just a couple of quick ideas here around this. Um, effective computing, we're at the stage now where, we, where AI can read your emotions by looking at your face. You can check that off, we're already there. Uh, perceptual computing, same thing. Um, Kevin Kelly says in his article that we are in the photonic era, that computing is done by seeing now, and that's where we're headed. Um, of course, NASA was the pioneer in the digital twin system and uh, have it, keeping a replica here at NASA, uh, they could troubleshoot. And it went from physical to digital, and that's what's happening to our reality now. Privacy is a big concern. Uh, the reason the public is so scared of what everyone's doing in this room is because we have done a very poor job of educating them. It's my call to action to you to say today, speak to the public. We have to tell them what's happening. They need to trust us. And hopefully if we do that, and if we are the caretakers of the future, they will accept some of the things that we're doing and understand that we're doing it to benefit humanity. The mirror world will enable us to manipulate time. We're gonna see different forms of time dilation within the mirror world. And think of information, and this is, this is an interesting way of thinking of information in the future. Think of information as a destination. So in the future, if you publish a book, instead of putting it on Amazon, I'm sorry, Amazon, uh, instead of putting it on Amazon, maybe you place your book in a destination on the planet in virtual reality or, or augmented reality. And to read that book, you have to travel in the mirror world to that destination. Maybe you do it because you want someone to learn something about a destination or a place. Uh, Facebook, is, Facebook is working on uh, live maps that uh, update automatically through crowdsourced data. Uh, simultaneous lo local, localization and mapping, of course, that's happening all the time because we all have cameras in our pockets. Uh, there will be a new virtual economy with virtual real estate. And if your company is not working on creating virtual real estate, you really should think about that now. Uh, do it now because the faster you have that, you can just implement that into whoever is going to own this mirror world in the future, whether that's Facebook, Amazon, or maybe someone that we've never heard of before. We should expect the future that we reflect. And that's really my message to all of you now. Um, we're going to hear some really interesting ideas and some really um, amazing ideas here in, in the idea of innovation. 
And I think what we should keep in mind is that we have a responsibility to ourselves and our fellow human beings to do the innovation that changes lives for the better. And that's not rhetoric, that this is a natural process that we're going through. And if we trust nature, if we, if we look to nature as, this, as the guidepost to innovation, we may be able to avoid some of the problems that we've created environmentally, psychologically, uh, and culturally in the future. Thank you. Stay with, stay with me Thank a moment. You. One okay. moment. Sure. I'd like to open up for one question. Okay. Um, anyone in the audience? One question for Gray. Yeah. Marcel? Oh. Hello. Okay, now, you, I, I lighted in a couple of slides the concept of ancient technologies, ancient knowledge. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you reconcile uh, and how do you envision in the new mirror world or, or in, in just in these alter, alternate futures to be able to, to rediscover and recuperate really advanced ancient technologies and ancient knowledge into a modern key of, of, of fruition? Well, it's interesting because um, I've been to conferences all over the world, and I've never been to a conference in a forest. Never. We don't hold our meetings in forests. We don't ask nature what we should do. And we are the new ones. Nature, is, nature has been around for billions of years. Biomimetics, if you look in, into biomimetics, you'll see that is the direction we need to go. And, and you know, it's easy. We, we, we can manipulate the cosmos. We can manipulate uh, technologies, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right thing to do. And, and the reason I say that is because nature has already worked out some of those issues. It's had millions and millions of years to work out those issues. We are, we are so new that sometimes an innovation may sound at first glance like it's the right direction to go, but how are we consulting nature, right? I mean, most people don't, and, and Omar, you, you sort of touched on this with your forest slide, most people don't realize how a forest works, that it communicates, that it feeds the other trees. And we heard just briefly this morning to not hold on to IP, right? It's very hard to do because our cultural narrative right now is slightly based on distrust and fear, but we have to trust each other. We, if we ever want to get off this planet as a species, and survive, we have to trust each other. That is an innovation we should be working on. And so that is, a na that is an ancient technology. That's what I mean by ancient, is that if you look at nature, it will tell you what to do. And so that's how we do it. So I encourage everyone in here to really investigate biomimetics, investigate nature, find out if what, you're in, if, you, if what you're innovating has a source code in nature that can help you do it the right way the first time, that's really what I'm saying here. So. Thank you, Gray. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. so much.